leadership first first and foremost is like I could go out there, run my team, run the offense, talk, make sure everyone's in the right position. But besides from that, I think probably my defense, I think my ability to make shots off the dribble, I think my, my ability to pass. Yeah. When I do these scout reports, I very rarely go look up anything about the player as far as looking at other people's scout reports or reading anything about them. I want to go and watch the games with an objective eye. The only thing I do is I type the player's name into YouTube and I put full game behind it and I go watch entire games of these guys because like I said, I don't want anybody else's ideas or anybody else's thoughts about the player to pollute my own thoughts. And it's amazing, Dylan Harper, that after I broke down the clips and everything, I went and watched this interview with you and Kristen Peake and from Yahoo when you were at the USA Basketball minicamp. And everything that you said about your game right here is exactly what I picked up. Your leadership has to be better. You are a good shooter right now, but there are tweaks that need to be made for it to be more efficient and for your shot to be more consistent. You are an incredibly intelligent on and off the ball defender. And you are an elite passer for your age group and for your skill set that God has given you. And that's going to bode you well at every single level of basketball that you play. Right now, I compare you to Jalen Brunson because y'all just ain't similar with your games. Y'all are similar with y'all pedigrees as well. His dad played in the NBA. Your dad played in the NBA. You got a brother that played in the NBA. I don't know if he got these siblings that played in the NBA, but growing up around the NBA family, you clearly going to have people that take you under the wing as your little brother, which Jalen Brunson has had. He has talked about that on other podcasts. Both of y'all are left-handed. Both of y'all are not exceptionally quick. Both of y'all are not great leapers, but y'all are able to get to wherever you need to get to on the floor and y'all can score at will. Both of y'all love physicality when you drive into the hole. And both of y'all are leaders. Jalen Brunson won a national championship when he was at Villanova and now has the New York Knicks going to the playoffs this year. And we're going to see what you're going to do at Rutgers with Ace Bailey. Y'all want to see how Ace Bailey is. Go watch the video that I did on him, the scouting report I did on him. And when you get to the Big Ten next year and when you get drafted into the NBA, Jalen Brunson has already proved that your prototype can work at the NBA level. But Dylan, there are tweaks that you need to make right now to make sure that you are able to have similar success to what Jalen Brunson has had in the NBA. And if you're somebody that wants to be like your father who won five NBA championships, you want to be somebody who was like your brother who played at Rutgers for four years and went on and worked his way to end up playing inside of the NBA. If you want to be an all-star like Jalen Brunson, you need to listen to everything I say in this video. And if you have any questions, you need to hit me up on Instagram at Dorian Group 82 like some of the other players have on the scout reports that I've done. For those y'all that ain't Jalen Brunson, y'all need to watch this entire video and see how it applies to your game, especially if you're a small guard. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, write in the comments who you want me to do a video on next, and write in the comments who Dylan Harper reminds you of. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from Group82Basketball.com and right here we got Dylan Harper crying and crying and crying and crying. Dylan, you cry too damn much, man. You're supposed to be the leader. You're supposed to be the point guard. You are the emotional catalyst for your team. They're going to be reading your energy to see how they should perform to the point where your mom even has you off to the side telling you about it. And if you expect to get shots like these, your teammate has to trust that you are the best person for them to lead them. Right here with your jump shot, I hate the fact that your shoulders are pointed to the right, your feet are pointed to the right, and you're left-handed. You are fighting your body every single time that you go up for a shot because your right hand has to guide the ball a little bit too much. You do it again right here from this left corner three, and I want you to really pay attention to your feet and your shoulders. When you catch the ball, the first thing you do is you dip. If Ace Bailey was a good defender, he would have closed out, he would have blocked that. Your feet are pointed towards the top of the key. Also, when you go up, you bring this left foot back. You are making your release time way too slow. And when you get to the NBA, your shot's going to get blocked. Jalen Brunson does something similar with pointing his feet to the right. So I ain't saying it can't work, but it is a habit that needs to be fixed. Because like I said, what you're doing with your right hand is you are covering the ball way too much. And your left hand has your elbow out. If you had your elbow come in where that green arrow is coming down, your left hand would go out to the left side. It would make for a lot smoother release. 
This right here is a perfect example why this is a massive problem. Because when your shot gets contested, you're pushing everything to the right, and that's why you're missing to the right. Look at when you go up. Your body is leaning sideways. You should never be leaning sideways when you're going up for a jump shot. You should be straight up and down. That's going to affect the trajectory of the shot. The next thing you do is you kick your left leg out. Are you doing the Charleston? What sort of kid and play step is this? You don't land on one leg for your jump shot, and look at where it misses. Off to the right. Studying your free throws, this shows it even better. You see how your left hand's in the middle of your head? The ball has to go to the left side. If you brought that arm over where it stayed in your shoulder pocket, it would be a very, very smooth release. Jalen Brunson does the same thing and his balls rattle in too. Pause. This is not something that you want to do as an elite shooter, so fix that now so to be ready when you get to the league. I give what the, what the defense uh, gives me, so, you know, I come out here, you know, if they're going to double team, I'm going to pass it, so, you know, I think my decision making has really, you know, made a jump and a leap throughout the years. When I'm evaluating a prospect, the best exhibitor of a prospect's basketball IQ is how they pass the ball because it shows me how you see the floor. Here you are on a screen and roll. Number 34 is going to dive hard to the basket. Their ball screen coverage is blitz. It's trap. This is something that you're probably going to see in college and you're probably going to see in the NBA. I love how you take one more dribble and you extend the trap out to give your teammates more spacing. You fake the ball as you're going to throw to that left wing for the three. Ace Bailey falls for that and you're able to get your big man right there for an easy finish at the rim. Jalen Brunson does this exact same thing. Fakes to the wing three, gets to Julius Randle, mouse in the house. Everybody in the NBA level can't make this pass that you made right here, and definitely everybody at the college level can't make this pass that you make right here. Anytime someone is blitzing or trapping a ball handler off a ball screen, they want to push you to that sideline, and this is the pass they want to give up. That cross-court diagonal all the way to the corner pass. I love the fact that you jump on this pass, which is something that when I was coming up, they told us to never do. But I love that you do that and you ball fake as the guy is rolling to the basket and you're able to jump and you're able to get the ball over to your teammate where it ain't the most perfect pass, but it's good enough for him to grab it. He gets a good shot. You get an offensive rebound. Your team gets two points. I love the versatility of your passing options as you go through your reads like Patrick Mahomes. You extend the trap again, you jump in the air, and all three of those guys are looking for you to either A, hit the roll guy in the middle of the paint, or throw that cross corner pass. You use this as an advantage to hit your guy at the top of the key, but he just airballs it. When you get to the NBA level, you're gonna be playing with a lot better shooters, and it's great that you're looking already to get the pass to the open guy, and I love what you do right here as you're driving to the right side, which is your weak hand. All four guys are looking at you. They're paying attention because they're just ball watchers. You know this, so you identify that shooter that's open on the weak side. You drive to the baseline, and I love the fact that you take ownership of your space. All young players pay attention to this. You stomp your left foot down, you use that momentum to swing with your offhand a great bounce pass down the baseline and you're able to get a hockey assist. You have a very similar situation right here which shows me your high basketball IQ again. You go down the same right driving lane, they try to take away that sideline pass and you're able to get it to an open shooter, he gets an and one. Jalen Brunson does this as well with Josh Hart right here. This is something that's gonna be available for you no matter what level of basketball that you're playing at, so always keep that great vision you have. I also listened to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver speak this week. And he was talking about how a lot of coaches are complaining that young players don't know how to play defense. Young players do not understand the basic defensive fundamentals that were usually taught at the high school level. And this right here shows me that you do. There was a screen and roll. You tag Samto on that screen and roll to make sure he doesn't get the lob. And they throw the cross corner pass, which is a smart read to make. You get all the way out there and close out. Look at your close out. You are forcing him to drive to his weak hand towards the baseline. Now, most guys would just let him drive immediately to the help. What do you do? You slide over and you take a charge. This is elite defense, and it shows me you have an exceptionally high basketball IQ. Even when it's a broken defensive play, 
Even when it seems like the offense has the advantage because they got y'all toe up, you still figure out a way to make the great play to get your team in a position where we're going to get the ball back. These are winning basketball plays. And this defensive possession right here is exactly the type of plays that you're going to need to make when you get to Rutgers and definitely when you get to the league. Let's break it down a little bit further. They're running this. Looks like there was kind of like an Iverson kid. I don't know what that was. But you see that there's Carter Knox is setting a back screen on your guy because they want to get Samto, who is not a three-point shooter, even though he's out on the left wing, to get that lob. You try to let your guy know that the lob's coming. He doesn't get there. So you have to get in front of Samto. He runs you over. And now you lay in the middle of the paint like you some road kill. Carter Knox came off that double stagger. He has a wide open three, and he hits all backboard. Samto gets the offensive rebound. You don't stand in pain and watch. You go locate your matchup, Carter Knox. And I love the fact right here that you hit a little bit behind number 10 to make it seem like that, that pass was wide open. Nah, uh prime time Deion Sanders. We going the other way. This is stuff when other folks are evaluating, I don't trust them because I know they're not paying attention to these little things. I know they don't have a trained eye. This is stuff that pops out on the screen to me that shows me that you are an elite player. They're running the exact same play again. This time you are communicating. You're letting number 34 know. Here comes the back screen. Make sure you switch, make sure you get Samto. Carter Knox is not even paying attention that you have picked up on it, even though you are grabbing his jersey. He's still coming off that staggered double, and you do what any smart off-ball defender would do. You shoot the gap. That pass ain't there. Carter Knox tries to go back door. You do a great job of denying that back door pass, and now they have to feed the post into Samto. This is not a spectacular defensive play. This is a high basketball IQ play, and this is the type of stuff that's gonna bode you well when you get to the NBA, along with sacrificing your body on people who have 70 pounds on you you're an elite defender always keep that like i spoke about in the intro you and Jalen brunson y'all are not exceptionally quick y'all are not great leapers but what y'all do is y'all love physicality and you are constantly putting pressure on the defense because you do not stop coming pause i love this play right here and it's very similar to what Jalen brunson did your Rutgers teammate, Ace Bailey, shoots a terrible shot where it hits the top of the side of the backboard. I didn't even notice it went that high the first time when I broke the film down. You get the rebound, and now you're out in transition. You feel Ace Bailey behind you, so you push that ball out in front of you. When you push that ball out in front of you, you know you're going in there where you could possibly get your shot blocked. You take the physicality, you create your own space, and I love the fact that when you go up for this left-hand layup, you put your right elbow right in that dude's neck. Ain't no ref gonna call that, buckets. Here you are in this clip manipulating the defense and then just taking what they give you to get a very easy finish at the rim. Let's break it down. You call for that ball screen on your right side because you want that defender to prepare himself that that ball screen is coming to his left side. You're gonna reject it and go to your strong hand, which is your left hand. That guy does a great job of recovering and cuts you off along with his help defender. You spin off of him immediately and get to that green box on the floor. Ace Bailey comes over and tries to help and you have your guy that's open on the wing, but you know what? I'm the best player, and this is an exceptionally easy shot for me. I'm going to just do a quick step through past Ace because he's a bad defender. I'm going to finish right at the rim. An offensive player who doesn't stop is annoying. An offensive player who is constantly putting pressure on the defense is annoying. These dudes do not want to guard today. These dudes do not want to exert energy on the defensive end like that. So you are always going to have an advantage when you do this. This play right here, you get a very light block out on Ace Bailey because y'all watch my scout report on him. He don't like going after defensive or offensive rebounds. You move him out the way like a feather. You are running the offense and telling him to get it to your point guard, even though you are the primary ball handler. He gets it back to you and you already analyze what you're supposed to do look at ace bailey's foot he has his right foot up which is your strong side and he's not going to be able to open his hips and recover you make a very simple move and you get to the basket to finish look at Jalen brunson he does the exact same thing to grady dick exact same move Most guys who put pressure on the defense nonstop, they're overly aggressive. They got bad shot selection. They ball hogs. They don't know how to play the team game. They're not patient. 
these are all things that do not classify you as a basketball player. You understand all of this stuff, and this plays a great example of it right here. You're running the offense again from the weak side. You're letting your guys know like, hey, you need to be getting the ball to number zero. They try to run that dribble handoff, but it's not there. He's able to feed you from the pinch post extended, and they immediately send a double team, and you recognize it. You see that red triangle, ain't nothing gonna be there for you unless you spin to the baseline. The right basketball play is to skip it to that wing three. They get great ball movement. It reverses back to you because you're patient. Now look, you got that entire left driving lane, which is your strong hand, and they're not gonna be able to stop you when you go there. Now, even though when you drive left, they're gonna try to collapse. You see you got a shooter right there at the right slot area. You airballed a three earlier in the game, homeboy. I'm not about to pass you the ball. What I'm about to do is do this pro hop, which is going to get all five defenders looking at me. But I love the fact that you just do a mini pro hop and you have a quick second jump, which allows you to elevate and finish above the entire team. Putting pressure on defenses is going to be your calling card. The same way it is with Jalen Brunson. This is something that just comes down to effort and being aggressive. This is something that's going to bode you well because a lot of guys can't do this. A lot of guys are scared to do this. And guys that usually have y'all athletic profile, they can't finish at the rim like this. Look at this finish. You are coming downhill. This is your weak hand. You are using your body to create separation and you shoot it with a perfect touch off the glass right over a shot blocker. Your ability to finish at the rim isn't just relegated to layups. You able to get up if you need to. I don't even know Jalen Brunson can dunk. Saw Julius Randle crying him about that because we ain't never seen it. I love how you are always looking at feet and you are always attacking the top foot. You don't even put the ball on the ground. You take it through your legs without even dribbling. You just get one step, two feet jump, boom. The fact you were just as comfortable finishing with your right hand as you are with your left is going to be very hard for people to guard you and very hard for people to scout you. I love this move right here. You do this little misdirection dribble and look at his foot. He is dead in the water. You have hopped off the ground because you know you're going to accelerate. And if you come off that too fast, he might fall down. You get a little step around him and you finish over two shot blockers. Dylan, at this stage in your development, you are the best high school player in the world. So what? When you get to the league, it don't matter. Everybody was the best player in the world. You got to work on your weaknesses. And your biggest weakness right now is your body language and your leadership. You have to be stoic. You have to be self-controlled because your teammates are looking at you for that guidance. And I know that's hard. The scripture tells us with much privilege comes much responsibility. But God ain't going to put more on you than you can bear. So I know you can handle it. I wish you the best, young man. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true.